my role as an extension entomologist is to provide the growers of the state of Arkansas with ways to control pests economically, profitably, and efficiently. <laughs> and, and at the same time, keeping in mind uh, making it as environmentally safe as possible. That's what we want to do. You know, I've tried to serve the clientele of this state. I, I tell my crew, you know, I don't, I don't answer to the Vice President of Agriculture or the Director of Extension, uh, the growers in this state are who I serve. One of the main focuses of our work uh, here at Lone Oak is to uh, look at the, at the impact of the neonicotinoids this class of chemistry is extremely vital to the growers in the Mid-South, uh, not only in soybeans, but in cotton, rice, uh, wheat, corn, milo. We felt like we needed to, to let the science catch up with the politics and start looking at, at what impact we were truly making on honeybees here in the Mid-South. So we started a, a, a series of studies, uh, we collected bees and pollen from the bees that, that were coming back to the hive. We also collected wildflowers out on the edges of fields. We took soil samples. Uh, we also collected from, from the uh, plants themselves and, and to see how much neonicotinoid was in the soybean flowers and also in cotton nectar and cotton pollen, corn pollen, uh, all those uh, different sources that, that bees could could come in contact with the neonicotinoids and and basically what we found was that that there's really very little expression of the neonicotinoids in the reproductive parts of the plants. Now we were picking up some low levels in in some of the some of the samples like corn pollen, uh, but in cotton nectar uh, there was zero in soybean flowers. We found zero expression. In the, in, the, in the flowers. So this is all good information and, and, and it helps us uh, to realize that, that maybe neonicotinoids aren't as big a factor as a lot of people claim they are in this colony collapse disorder of honeybees. So we, the, the corn earworm we consider to be the most devastating insect pest in soybeans because they feed on the, the pod. Corn earworm has become a, a more predominant pest for us, particularly in soybeans. You know, our thresholds, a lot of the thresholds that we developed, like the corn earworm threshold, we had a threshold back 15 years ago that was developed that, that said we could withstand three to four earworms per row foot. But you know, thresholds got to change when, when commodity prices go up, those thresholds got to go down and we, we felt like we were taking too much damage. So we started reevaluating our threshold back a few years ago and, and we quickly dropped our threshold to, uh, to nine per 25 or one per row foot, which was a substantial drop. It could be uh, that it's actually a little lower than that. We may be, you know, it may be somewhere around six or eight or nine and that's what we're trying to refine right now is you know, if we can adjust it to based on the, on the current prices that we have, uh, we can help growers be more profitable and make better determination on when they need to treat, not just on the numbers that are in the field, but on the, on the value of the crop and the cost of control and all those factors that really need to go into a threshold that, uh, that we currently don't use. We want the, the threshold to be dynamic. It needs to change reflecting the current issues and, and the situation that, that we have. Fire ants are such an invasive pest, they, they not only cause issues at harvest, but they, they get in folks' equipment, uh, they, they infest their, their shop and that kind of stuff. And so fire ants have been problematic in a, in a number of uh, different ways for us in Arkansas, but primarily the issue at harvest where the mounds actually are in the way of the header and they can cause some problems for the guys when they run their header into those big mounds out there. So we started looking at ways that we could possibly reduce fire ant infestations out in fields. And, and the last thing we want to do is, is make a, a lot of foliar or, or spray type applications to reduce those numbers because we're, 
we're fearful of what that impact might be on the natural enemy complex. You know, soybeans more than any other crop uh, relies heavily on IPM and, and, the, and the beneficial complex out there. So maintaining that complex of, of natural enemies to our pest is extremely important in soybeans. So we started looking at, at some ways to uh, reduce those numbers in fields by using some baits and stuff like that. And in our preliminary trials last year, uh, we were able to reduce the number of colonies per acre in our studies uh, with a, a simple bait type uh, product that, that uh, will help us keep those numbers under control and, and reduce that, those issues with, with harvest. A lot of the work that I do, in fact all the work I do, whether it's insecticide seed treatments or foliar efficacy trials, uh, the honeybee work that we've done, uh, the fire ant project, all these projects wouldn't be possible without soybean promotion board funding.